I can't believe I'm making this video. Just a few years ago, if you asked me whether I thought manga or webtoons were better, I'd feel insulted that you asked it all. Today, I'm upset that I have to pick just one. If you're one of the senior citizens of the anime or manga communities like myself, you'll remember a time when talking about either one was almost a taboo. You'd be berated or lose respect for it, barely anyone you'd meet in real life would have any idea what it was, and those who did know lumped it in with Cow and Chicken or Ben 10. It wasn't fun. That's where the webtoon community is now. Though their popularity is rising and society is slowly coming to accept that judging people for liking things you don't know anything about is wrong, they're still pretty far off from the almost, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, mainstream status anime boasts. A combination of that limited popularity and the failure of breakout works like solo leveling to convince the wider world that webtoons are just as well written as other respectable media have come together to result in people just not thinking they're worth the time of day. Those people are wrong. Now, before I start offending anyone, and that is unavoidable with this type of video, let's lay down the law. Obviously, within any group of things, some will shine and some will be curses a resentful Queen Elizabeth sent us from beyond the grave. We obviously can't group them all together, so just like the schools with special ed classes, we're going to have to split the manga and webtoons we look at into the little devils no one wanted and the unique gems we can't help but love. This analogy didn't end up being as funny as I wanted, but I have seven of these videos to make in three days and I'm already tired. Let's move on. Art, storytelling, character writing, entertainment factor, readability. First for the bottom tier stories of each medium and then for the top of the line goodies, I'll use those as the points of comparison to determine a winner. Bad manga versus bad webtoons, which have better art? Well, I think it goes without saying that Japanese mangaka are extremely skilled and talented people who make magic happen whenever they put pen to page. But I'll have to lean in the direction of webtoons here. Pretty colors and visually appealing scenes go a long way when trying to convince readers to endure low quality work. I'm going to use an example recommended to me by a commenter to prove that I really do listen to you guys. Hero Has Returned is garbage. I can't remember how many chapters I read, but it was too many. Maybe I read the wrong story, and if I did, my bad, but it has zero redeeming qualities whatsoever. Unlikable characters, jank story progression, poor engagement and pacing, and it's boring. Despite that though, albeit underwhelming, the art is still passable, and if your action scenes look even somewhat alive, that's a dub. Hate to hate on the goats, but when it comes to manga, they really let anything slide. The low-end stories switch between forgettable and I wish I could forget levels of bad, and in black and white, that's hard to give a pass. Now, before I move on, I need a favor from all of you. Hit the subscribe button to make up for the poor soul whose heart I just broke. They're probably never watching my videos again and I need to stay afloat. Bad manga versus bad webtoons, which have better storytelling? This one's easy. Manga. The bad stuff is usually just cliche and indistinguishable from any other bargain bucket reads, but because manga is published in magazines under the supervision of editors ensuring professional standards are met, it doesn't get much worse than the story of my nightmares, Sket Dance. Webtoons, on the other hand, are online publications usually submitted to platforms and websites that only very loosely screen their entries to ensure they meet community guidelines. The only motivation to put forth reasonable work is the promise of coin that comes with increased popularity, likely what allowed Hero Has Returned to see the light of day. Bad manga versus bad webtoons which have better character writing. <sighs> Okay, I complained about cultivation writers that one time in that one video and I stand by saying they're the dirt standard for character writing, but I'm not sure lesser mangaka are much better. Bad webtoons have unrealistic and inconsistent characters that no one could ever believe exist, but I'd take that over the innumerable self-insert replicas that pop up in Japanese manga. Whether to make the characters easier to understand or because they know no other way of doing it, low-tier mangaka write archetypes instead of people. Tsundere, Yandere, Pervert, Virgin. 
One word is often enough to describe a character's entire character and it's just repetitive and annoying. At least the outrightly bad characters are complex enough to beat those templates out in how interesting they are. On the other side of that coin though, bad manga are more readable than bad webtoons because they're corporate enough to never be outright offensive. Though manga like Redo of a Healer or Death to Break of Creative Licenses and Liberties, they still stray away from anything political and observe all of the fundamentals of storytelling. Something I can't say goes for I'm the Great Immortal or its ilk. Tied it to two, perhaps in a turn of fate, whether bad manga or bad webtoons are better comes down to which is more entertaining. In case you don't get what the point of comparing these at all was, it was to determine the basic quality standards. When picking up a random run-of-the-mill manga or webtoon which is more likely to provide a good reading experience. Webtoons. Bad manga are less entertaining than bad webtoons because their writers have different things in mind. Mangaka want to keep their serialization alive and will compromise their visions to do what is correct. Webtoon creators, however, face no threat of outright cancellation. Though their readerships may dwindle, that isn't the end, so they're patient, tell the stories they want to, when they want to, and put their passion into their works. They have fun. That's why I can find myself enjoying something like My Wife is the Demon Queen. It has next to no redeeming qualities and is probably just as bad as Hero has returned but it has the brand of bad characters and execution that gives me a good enough chuckle that I don't mind reading tons of its chapters. Because they're allowed to at least be unique, there are enough types of bad webtoons that everyone might be able to find one that suits them just well enough that they can overlook its flaws. That's where bad webtoons beat out bad manga and why I have a message for you, commenter whose name I can pull up at the time of writing the script. Just because I ragged on something you love, I don't think less of you or your taste. We all have a few guilty pleasures that aren't objectively great that someone's going to insult us for. And if they aren't named Demon Slayer, that's fine. You do you. Sentimental garbage aside, there are two ways people generally try to decide which is better between two groups. The first is to determine average quality as we just did and the second is to compare which has the best entries at the very top. Which is what most of you are really here for. Good manga versus good webtoons, which have better art. Starting with the current most popular webtoon, Lore Olympus, it should be easy to figure out how big of a difference color makes. Although it loses points for its inconsistency, I'd be a liar if I said I was at no points mesmerized. Considering both the fine art it delivers to your screen and the visual masterclasses action webtoons put on, the likes of which carried solo leveling, it becomes difficult to claim that the medium with less to work with could be superior. I don't care though and still give it to manga. Although webtoons aren't restricted by the page and can take advantage of this to improve the framing of scenes and characters, that comes at the expense of landscape angles that are often the most impressive and breathtaking displays. Scroll shots and sideways arrangements, which I hate turning my head for, just don't have the same effect. Now, I won't base handing the art prize over to manga on just that. The traditional manga format makes it possible to improve the choreography of scenes through advanced paneling you'd have to pay extra close attention to to truly appreciate in ways Dragon Ball and Bleach do a heck of a good job showing. The lack of color makes it easier to draw basic scenes in a way that allows teams on rigid schedules to redirect time to vital panels that can be turned into truly impactful images in a way webtoons can't manage without noticeable drops in quality, and most importantly of all, black and white images provide contrast that makes images more visually striking, a reason some anime and even webtoons themselves choose to strip the color from scenes to increase their power and impact. I don't know anything about art, sure, and I don't plan on studying it to make this one part of my video more accurate, my takes are always questionable anyway. Despite that, if I want to end this all without pretending I know what I'm talking about, I've read Berserk and Vagabond. 
No webtoon I've laid my eyes upon has made anywhere near as strong of an impression as those gave me and even slightly lower quality works with arguably better uses of their particularly picturesque panels like Actage or Oshinoko still far exceed what webtoons have shown me. Manga takes this in my book, go ahead and tell me why I'm wrong in the comments, if anyone puts forth a recommendation that changes my mind, I'll take my L with grace. Moving on. Good manga versus good webtoons, which has better storytelling? If you're a particularly big fan of webtoons, you may recognize the name Carnaby Kim. If not my favorite webtoon creator, he's certainly near the top with plenty of works that have risen to notoriety, one of my favorites being Pigpen. While reading his thrillers, I find myself about as captivated as gay people in the Middle East. His control of pacing and character writing, ability to create and shift moods seamlessly and strikingly, compelling you into binge reads you can't resist, Tower of Gods, vast world building, everything's finds meticulous intrigue. I just can't give the prize to any of them. Between those and the romance stories that have stood at the top of the webtoon charts, I just can't find anything that matches the scope of One Piece with what may be the greatest world built in fiction to serve as setting to the most patient story ever told. I can't find anything as chaotically creative as Jojo's Bizarre Adventure or as cunning as Naoki Urasawa's Monster. Sure, I'm making the assumptions that you've seen a lot of the things I'm talking about, but this video's already getting crazy long without my explanations and I'll barely have time to edit. Even if you haven't read the manga I'm talking about, if you watch my videos, you should have enough awareness of the community that their reputations should precede them. Honestly, from the handful of manga I've mentioned between the last two criteria, almost any of them could be used in the argument for each of the five categories individually against webtoons as a whole. So if you haven't read any, take them as recommendations. While on the topic of reading, I'm skipping ahead to readability now. Webtoons win, they just read easier. The greatest manga are all in the truly cutthroat magazines which allow no days off. They end up needing to keep the pace up and maximize the impact of each chapter, which is ideal for serialization and keeping readers around but makes it hard to get into a truly good rhythm. Anything counts as readable if you only have to sit through one chapter a week, so we're looking at this from the binger's perspective. The right switches between high intensity storytelling and relative low points keep readers more engaged because the experience is less exhausting. The great noblesse and stories like Maybe Meant to Be all went out in this category because they are more comfortable to get through more pleasant experiences, something helped even further by the mood music which occasionally pops in to really make any read fun. Now, to secure two consecutive successful segues, let's go from pleasant experiences to pleasant people. Comparing the bottom 1%, Webtoon won this category. It wins the bottom 10, 50, and 70% too. If you want to stretch it all the way to the bottom 99.9% .9 of webtoons and manga, maybe webtoons would still win, but the characters in the top 0.1% of manga are just in a different stratosphere. Even just from the manga we've already brought up to prove that point about them being super well-rounded and definitely not because I want to sleep, Vagabond gives us Miyamoto Musashi and Sasaki Kojiro, who are forced to endure innumerable challenges through all their days. Berserk honestly gives us an endless list, but Guts and Griffith are all we need to cover the fiercely determined and emotionally conflicted category of characters. One Piece gives us Kozuki Odin and Goldie Roger as our boundlessly charismatic entries. JoJo's gives us Yoshikage Kira as... Honestly, I don't know what, but that guy has a few screws loose and Monster gave this world Johan Liebert. Although I really like John from An Ordinary Arthur from the beginning after the end and I Love You's MC whose name I'm not confident enough to say on the internet, I just haven't yet seen that caliber of character in webtoons. Once again, try prove me wrong. Without even bringing the whole entertainment thing into question, manga's already won, so I'll skip right ahead and say it took that too. 
Titles like Chainsaw Man and Hunter x Hunter, which I'm realizing now would throw the readability category back into debate, carry manga through this category since I robbed their colorful casts of the chance to shine in the characters section. I'd say more about that last one, but you already know who wins for one, and once that's revealed, video engagement plummets. It's my opinion that the worst manga are worse than the worst webtoons, and the best manga are better than the best webtoons. Total count from both categories goes to manga in a close 6-4 to four bout, but considering I've read all of the truly great manga already, Everything's all the same to me from here on anyway. I might read more webtoons than manga at the current stage of my life and I don't think it'd hurt for some of you who haven't tried any to do so. If Webtoon Week followed the planned release schedule, this is day 6 in the Webtoon Starter Pack video or whatever I name it might help you go about getting into webtoons. I have 6 more scripts to write, like, subscribe, Patreon or whatever can John out.